I'd like to thank everyone who was involved in making this event possible, most notably the Global African Diaspora Studies Research Platform, the Department of African Studies at the University of Vienna, and the Vienna Institute for International Dialogue and Cooperation. I wish you an inspiring and enjoyable evening with us. Welcome again. Now I would like to ask His Excellency, the Ambassador of the Republic of Kenya, Michael Oyugi, for his welcome address, please. Guten Abend. I'm trying to speak the little uh, Deutsch that I've learned, though I know this evening we are dealing with material in another language altogether. Uh, but uh, let me begin uh, by also saying a word of welcome to our renowned Professor Ngugi Wadiongo, uh, whose works are known well beyond our own country where it all began. And I'm very glad to see him here today and uh, to see that he has such a, a large following, if I might say so, which I think he deserves given the work that he's done all this time. But uh, uh, Professor, let me welcome you. Uh, let me join the others in welcoming you. And let me also say a word of appreciation to the head librarian and uh, head of uh, the Department of African Studies, Professor Bodomo, for making it possible for me to come here. Uh, Professor Bodomo kept us in the picture about what he was organizing, wanting to bring uh, a distinguished African scholar in this respect to come and uh, expose and discuss his ideas with the reading public as well as the, the students at the university. So I'm very glad that finally this has taken uh, place. And for me, as an ambassador and as a career diplomat, I find uh, I see this from another angle, not just the academic angle. I, I cannot fail to see it from the diplomatic angle. In diplomacy, we have many pillars. And one of these is known as cultural diplomacy. In my own country, in Kenya, we have five key pillars of foreign policy, and one of them is cultural. And uh, this cultural pillar promotes uh, re activities in relations between countries where you engage in matters that touch on culture, exchanges along those lines. And I see Professor Ngugi's visit here from my perspective as squarely falling into that bit of cultural pillar. You academics will say something else, but that is fine. Uh, uh, w w without uh, taking too much attention, because this evening is Professor Ngugi Wathiongo's evening, and it's your evening to interrogate him, to engage him, because he's, ne he's not always here with us. So I will not say much more, but to just thank the university for, for organizing this very important gathering and for making it possible for me to come. And I wish you all a very pleasant and fruitful exchanges with our renowned Professor Ngugi Wathiongo. Thank you very much. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, my name is Adams Bodomo, head of the Department of African Studies and director of the uh, Global African Diaspora, Diaspora Studies Research Platform. Um, on behalf of my colleagues in the department and on behalf of my colleagues in the research platform, I want to welcome you to this great event. We have been working very hard to bring to you such a distinguished guest. We're very proud that we could put this off. I mean, we could get this through. It was a lot of work, hard work, but here he is now. And I have already introduced and welcomed the professor in the department, so I'm not going to go too much into details, except to say that this is, he's not just only coming to us from uh, the UC Ivan, University of California Ivan, as, the, uh, as a professor of comparative literature and also director of a center there. He is coming to us as 
our hero. For those of us who have read his books all the way from Africa, I'm from Ghana, but I read his books, uh, you know, Weep Not Child, The River Between, Petals of Blood. I mean, I didn't even know where Kenya was when I was doing all this. And I just loved these books. But uh, today, he is a very, uh, he comes to us as a, also a distinguished, highly decorated uh, author. He's been, he's received a lot of prizes in many, many places. And so we're very happy to have him. He's not going to talk too much about his earlier books. Today, he's going to read to us his latest book, The Birth of a Dream Weaver. Thank you very much, and welcome, Prof. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Before I go, let me introduce my sister, uh, Miss Irene Puda. Even though she's from Burkina Faso and I'm from Ghana, we speak the same language. So I'm very proud to introduce my sister to come and talk on behalf of Vedic. Thank you. Your Excellency, Ambassador of Kenya in Vienna, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Habari Gani, Karibu. It's a pleasure for me today to welcome you to this uh, reading, the reading of a prominent guest, one of the very important intellectual uh, writer Professor Chongo. My name is Irene Ohaopoda. I am conference manager at the VIDC, the Vienna Institute of International Dialogue and Cooperation. Why are we uh, part of the, this event? The VIDC was uh, a part uh, grounded with, uh, from one of the a very, very important uh, men from uh, Kenya. His name is Tom Boya. Tom Boya uh, was uh, a Pan-African. He, uh, uh, he was one of the, the first pan uh, third moderator of the first Pan-African student conference uh, uh, in uh, Ghana. And Professor talked about him in his uh, book. So it's for us very important to mention this uh, person, to mention uh, uh, Professor uh, Tiango, uh, uh, who is a uh, uh, a great writer. And for us, it's a very uh, good uh, opportunity and uh, a very on honor uh, opportunity to come here and to welcome him to hear about his reading. The book we are reading today, Bird of uh, Dreamweaver, is a memoir, a memoir of a writer awakening, a fantastic book, uh, which is written in the context of colonization and decolonization of Uganda Kenya, and the rest of the African country. He said, Professor uh, Wachongo, I entered Makarere University College in July 1959, subject of a Britain crown colony, and left in March 1964, citizen of an independent African state. Between these periods, he was a, a writer. A writer was born. So it is very important for us today to hear about his uh, history, how the, this writer is born, how uh, uh, Wachongo is, uh, a great, uh, is become a great uh, writer today. This uh, event couldn't have taken place uh, without the cooperation of many partners. On behalf of the VIDC, I would like to thank again the Vienna Institute Library the Vienna University Library, the Department of African Studies of the University of Vienna, the Global African Diaspora Studies Research Platform, and last but not least, the Ocean Development Agency for its uh, financial support. I would like uh, now to give the floor to uh, our moderator today, Martina Koft, but let me introduce you a little bit, uh, Martina Koft. She is uh, a senior lecturer in African literature. Her research areas are African literature on the 20th and 21st centuries, colonial and post-colonial narrative of development, representation of gender and feminist theory, trauma, memory, uh, and the ethic of representation. Mrs. Koff, your, the floor is yours. Thank you for today. So dear guests, dear Professor Ngugi, Good evening and welcome again to all of you. 
I think our speakers so far have shown one thing to you all, that it took a lot of initiative and a lot of support to make this evening happy, and I cannot tell you how happy I am that um, we are here tonight with Professor Ngugi Vathyongo, and he is the most important, important person today, and it is, um, and let me thank you very much for taking this long journey to come here today. So it is my pleasure to guide you through the evening today. And um, I am sure that the audience by now is more than eager to hear the person speak for whom all you have come today. Uh, Professor Ngugi will read from his memoir, The Birth of a Dream Weaver, published last year. I will give a brief introduction into your work, but afterwards, um, before, we will listen to you reading a chapter from your book. So to start with, we chose the chapter Writing for the Money for It, or in the German translation, which is also available here, and I will say a few words after, uh, about it um, afterwards. Uh, the, in the German translation, uh, the chapter is, has the title Lohnschreiberei. In this chapter, you tell the story behind your first novel, uh, the River Between, it was not your first novel published, but the first uh, novel um, you wrote. And in this chapter, uh, you give a wonderful account of how your passion for literature, your involvement in history and in political struggle, and your Gikuyu culture and experience, how these um, strands, how they all meet in your writing. And more than that, it is a beautiful narrative on the interplay of fact and imagination in fiction. So, please, um, the floor is yours. Thank you. It's a really great pleasure for me to be in Vienna. This is my second time here. <clears throat> I was here some years ago. I don't know f for what occasion, but I do remember St. Stephen's Church, which I visited, and I thought it was the most incredible uh, architecture or Gothic architecture I'd ever seen. Everything so finely tuned and uh, that's what made me think maybe uh, Austrians are very religious because only, <laughs> only a person who's so devoted to the higher order of being could have devoted so much energy, so much love into having those, you know, Gothic lines. Uh, so I'll be visiting the church. It's one of my things which I must do before I leave for Spain. Now, <clears throat> I really do appreciate both the invitation and uh, your presence here. Um, in particular, I really appreciate uh, the presence of uh, my ambassador, uh, Ambassador Oyugi, and thank you for your words. You know, when we travel places as Kenyans, but particularly as, as a Kenyan writer, uh, when you meet your ambassador or their representative, it's like you are in touch. You feel a sense of touch of home. And so it's like he brings home to me, so thank you. And I will tell you about how I came to write my first short story. Still magazines at Makerere, and most of colleges in Africa were very, very important. They were venues through which students could uh, try out their writings. One of the more most famous magazines in Makerere of my time was called Penpoint. In Ibadan, Nigeria, there was the horn in Makerere pen point. Now, I once, the people who contributed to pen point became very, they were like heroes, these writers, right? You know, and one of them, Jonathan Carriera, came from Kenya. I'd heard so much about him. And then I met him one time in, the corridors of the, you know. And he recognized me, or uh, 
as James Goge. I was called James Goge at the time. Because as seniors, one of the faculty had been reading my essays to them as to how an academic writer, paper should be written. So they are four years, and they are being read essays from my first year. So they were aware of me, but I was not aware of them. So I was really in awe of them, not the other way around. So I met him, Jonathan Carriera, and I stood there in awe. I wanted to talk with him further, but I did not know what to say. Talk of one's mouth drying up. So on that first meeting, encounter, we went our different ways. I feeling that there was something, whatever it was, I should have said, but didn't. A few days later, I bumped into him outside the main hall. This time, I couldn't pass up the opportunity. I blurted out the first words from my mouth. Excuse me, Mr. Carriera. I have written a short story. Would you care to look at it? Yes, give it to me any time, he said without hesitation and left. After a few steps, he stopped and looked back. Hey, do you have it with you? Oh, oh, oh no, 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 I'm, I'm putting on the finishing touches uh, tomorrow perhaps. Okay, take your time. Actually, I should have told him, or rather I should have said, that I had been thinking about writing, <laughs> rather than that I had started doing it. I had transformed a vague desire into a fact that had yet to be actualized. I must now produce the fact Otherwise, how would I face him the next time? So I went back to my room in my hall of residence and immediately began the draft of my first short story ever that I called The Fig Tree. It's a story of a woman in a polygamous household, a victim of domestic silence. She is childless. This would seem to be the problem between husband and wife. My character cannot take it anymore. She decided to leave her husband. I was able to capture the senseless violence I had seen in my father's house against my mother years ago. I wrote feverishly. I had not realized that I still carried the heaviness of the past. It was a relief when everything came out. Carriera read the draft returned it and praised the quality of the writing, but also talked about the difference between an episode and a story. I had merely described an event. So he told me, you cannot simply say, oh, I went to Nairobi and back. What happened there and why? Did the experience change the character in any way, even a small way? So he talked to me of irony, change, the invisible logic behind fiction where nothing happens by chance or coincidence. The woman is beaten. She runs away. So what? OK, I went back and worked on it. Not one draft, but several. The woman still runs away, but finds refuge under a mogumo tree, a kind of sacred fig tree where she seems to undergo some kind of spiritual experience. But in, re in reality, she simply realizes that she is already pregnant. Does she go away for good? But where to in a society where life is lived in close commun communion with the land and with the community? Return? But given the new life she carries in her, she opts to return hoping that this time the marriage will work. Though the story and the domestic violence are based on my experience at home, there are important departures from biographical. My mother had children, six in all, and when she finally left my father, 
and went back to her father's place, she never returned. The fictional resolution of the conflict is not, not satisfactory, for it's not clear that anything has changed on the part of the man. But I put in a lot into the evocation of the land, the spiritual transformation, and a sense of self, implying that the woman's self-knowledge may make her assert herself more in, in her relationship. The fig tree actually later appeared in pen point number five in December 1960, a year after I was in college. And later I wrote a few more which are published pen point and I had enough or so I thought and believe it or not, I put them together and I sent all the stories to some publishing houses in London. I didn't know who they were. I said, looked up in a publishing house, and one of them happened to be Jonathan Cape, which rejected the collection without, okay. However, the reply from Hutchinson in London added that if I ever wrote a novel, the editors hoped I would show it to them. Looking back, I knew I'd be grateful forever that they had rejected the volume because the uneven mix of the mature and the juvenile would have been a very unfortunate introduction to the world of books and book people. But I was happy, very happy, that someone had made a reference to a novel I might write. It was really interesting, and I would say that he's a, re a great author, and I think we can learn a lot from him, like all his memories and the times he had to go through, and what he is, um, accomplished in, during his life. And there were many things to laugh about, like he's a really humorous person, so it was a really enjoyable day, uh, evening. I know Professor Gugie, it's a, it's a household name in Kenya. In, in uh, literary circles, at the university where I used to teach, and even in, in, in political life. Now here, it, it is very important uh, for me, partly, uh, first of all, because he, he, as a Kenyan, and a Kenyan intellectual, a Kenyan, uh, uh, shall I say, a Kenyan, a very successful Kenyan writer coming out here is good, uh, uh, image for the country. He is like an ambassador himself because anywhere he goes, he, he is seen as a Kenyan, as an African. So his coming to Vienna is very important uh, in the sense that we also encourage what we call cultural diplomacy. And that means that uh, exchanging ideas in the area of culture, which includes education and other traditional uh, uh, traditional uh, cultural uh, subjects. So this is very much uh, the kind of uh, interactions that we would encourage, even from the diplomatic side. I feel really, really appreciated. I feel really, really amazed to be a Kenyan in Austria and to welcome Gugi in Austria, Vienna. Because I'm also a student in the English department of University of Vienna and I work as an English teacher in Vienna and Googie also being a very famous writer of East Africa, of course not for only East Africa but the whole of Africa, she represents us as Kenyans and that really makes us very proud as Kenyans. I learned from him you have to stay authentic, you have to stay original because like we know, many people who travel abroad, they change their accent for example, like when they just land in Europe or America. But Ngugi Wathiongo has lived in Europe and America for the last, like, since 1980s, and he, sp he still speaks Kenyan English, and I find that amazing. I find it's very important because that's what differentiates us between the, the, so the American or the British and the Kenyan. So we are original, we are our own, and we have to keep our culture. And we, don't, we just don't have to copy things and try to be like the others, because we are we, and we have to stay the way we are. His, his lectures, his... Yes, I mean, he, he's, he's, he's a writer who uh, does a lot of things, you know, as I mentioned in my introduction. As a young boy, 
growing up in Ghana, I was already reading his earliest novels, you know, Weep Not Child, The River Between, Petals of Blood, and I had no idea where Kenya was, but he was speaking to me. His works are uh, evergreen, and his latest works, for example, as I mentioned, actually, uh, as a linguist, as somebody who is a professor of linguistics and African studies, he actually leads the way. He's a hero in the sense that he is telling the world that everybody should uh, pay close attention to the development of African languages and cultures. And this is exactly my, what, what, what my, my lectureship is all about, my professorship is all about, the promotion of African languages, African literature, and African culture in general. Specific is his reading about a very important time about the decolonization process in Africa. And this is not only for Africa important, but also in, for Austria. It's always said that Austria was not involved in the colonization of Africa, but that's only the half of the truth. First, we benefited and still benefit from the exploitation of Africa. And secondly, the colonial thinking, the thinking of superiority went into our society. It's part, it's one of the source of racism today. And therefore, such readings, like from Gugi Wationgo, are, in my opinion, very important. Do you know, uh, Wationgo is a very uh, known, prominent uh, writer. And he, he is uh, on the list of uh, the, uh, how do you say, uh, Nobel Prize. Yeah? And it's for us a uh, very uh, a big thing to bring him in Vienna and to read his uh, memoir. So we are very happy that we succeeded.